Hey, good morning. Today is September 14th and my um, compounded trisepatide Manjaro um, is arriving today. So I'm very excited. Um, I have been doing a lot of research and wrote down a series of tips and things. So I thought I would share it with you. Um, you know, it's not medical advice, certainly. It's just different things I've seen um, on the internet and I thought I would share it. Maybe it will help you. Um, Dan, so my husband, Dan, um, has really bad diabetes. And so he was on Ozempic for, I want to say maybe two months, maybe three months. Um, but he got very, very sick to the point where he was prescribed, um, anti-nausea medication, was having bouts of throwing up really bad. And we just didn't understand what was going on. And in hindsight, after doing all this research, I understand what's going on because I understand how Ozempic works and what it's doing for your body. Um, but he was prescribed it with no direction at all. And so he was eating like normal and, um, and not eating great, you know, let's be honest here. So no wonder he got sick. So, um, I don't want to go into this new journey, um, without all of my, um, research because I just, I don't want to be sick all the time. Um, Manjaro and, and, uh, Ozempic, which is semaglutide, um, are similar in a lot of ways. They're both GLP ones. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to say for that. Um, okay. So, um, again, I'm going to be doing, um, compounded medication because I'm not diabetic. So he, he would qualify for Manjaro through Kaiser, our insurance. Um, and I think he's going to work towards doing that. Um, cause his blood sugar still isn't great. He's on Victoza, but I don't know that it's doing a whole lot and he takes insulin and all that. So I'm hopeful that Dan will also get on Manjaro, but that's his choice, his journey, everything like that. So, um, I am doing the compounded version because I can't get it covered through my insurance because I'm not a type two diabetic. Um, someday, you know, so the FDA did approve, um, Manjaro for weight loss, um, rather than t just type two diabetes, um, or they're about to in October, something, something's going on to where it's going to be, it's projected to be, um, considered a weight loss medication soon, but it's been used for weight loss for a long time. It's called off label when you use a medication that's not typical for what it's used for examples metformin can be used for diabetics but then also it can be used for people struggling with um, infertility um, lamictal is a medication that is used for seizures but can also be used for mental health conditions so there's lots of medications where they're indicated for a certain um like clonidine um my daughter who's autistic, takes it at night um, to help her sleep. She's prescribed this um, and it's considered a blood pressure medication. So, you know, the, like there are medications that are used typically for one thing, but can be used for other things. So all that being said, <laughs> sorry, that was a lot. Um, I, I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong by taking this medication for weight loss when it's technically a diabetic medication. And I don't have diabetes. So there we go. Um, so compounded terzepatide is going to come in vials. I will do a video showing you when I get the package of what it looks like. I'm going to go through all of the tips and then I'm going to tell you my game plan. I think that's a good way to do it. Um, so something that people do that will help them often in my research, I've seen them do it if there is a stall but this can also help with side effects. So splitting the dose, you can't really do this with the Manjaro pill or pills, um, dispensers because they come like in a preloaded pen. Um, but if you're doing the compound, you can just drop half of your dose 
do it on a Monday, draw up the other half, do it on Thursday. Traditionally, it's a once a week um, injection. So uh, basal metabolic rate, um, this is um, your baseline of calories that you'll want in a day. Um, I did not write down how to get to the basal metabolic rate. So if you're thinking about going with any of these tips, that's something to watch for is the basal metabolic rate. And then I believe you want to go 500 calories less than that um, in order to be in a calorie deficit. Um, mindset. So don't compare yourself to others. Um, I kind of feel like I'm gearing up similar when I had gastric bypass surgery 10, 11 years ago. Um, so there's a lot of people that have done weight loss surgery and a lot of people that are doing Manjaro or semaglutide, Ozembic, all those things. So, um, everybody's journey is different. So it's important to not look at someone's before and after picture and be disappointed if, if your journey isn't, isn't the same. And I think that I heard somewhere that people post the, the, um, not the bonus reel, but the, they, they post the best, right? I mean, you want to post your best, best, uh, results. So they're not posting the days that are like, so, so they're posting the best. So keep that in mind that everybody has bad days. Um, so high protein foods to keep stocked in your house, eggs. Um, although I have done some research, some people, can't tolerate eggs. It just doesn't sit well in their stomach. So, you know, again, these are just kind of some tips. And when I start the medication, I'll see what works for me. Um, so eggs, cheese sticks, chicken, cottage cheese, yogurt, and tuna. Um, I have seen people say that hard to digest meats like pork or steak, um, can make it difficult. So one of the things that the medication is doing is it's slowing down the digestion process in the um, intestines. So people can get burps or sulfur burps or um, really bad constipation or the opposite, get diarrhea. So these are some light protein foods, um, also protein shakes, of course. Um, making a water goal. So I really struggle with drinking water. Um, but I've gotten better at it in the last couple weeks. Um, I do use those flavor packets that helps me get more water in. Um, so making a water goal each day and then chugging at the top of the hour. So setting an alarm and just like chugging the water at that top of the hour. I've seen, um, someone do that and it seems to help a lot. Um, changing your mindset regarding body movement. So rather than I have to take a walk or I have to move my body, it's I get to walk. I get to move my body. Um, multivitamins, um, your body weight times 12 equals your baseline calories. So that might be similar to the basal metabolic rate. And then excuse me, minusing 500. I don't know. I have a meeting. So, um, I'm getting the medication through, um, Mochi, which is an online company. And I have a meeting with the nutritionist. Um, sorry, I'm getting hiccups or dietitian, um, tomorrow. So I think she's going to help me with a lot of this stuff too. But again, these are just, um, some research that I did on online. Um, so, um, take out the medication, take it out of the fridge about 30 minutes before the shot, um, eat a high protein meal or drink a protein shake three, 30 minutes prior to the shot. So it's my understanding that these can help with nausea and the side effects. Um, given the injection in the top of the thigh can also help with the side effects sniff the alcohol pad right before the injection to keep nausea away, um, have a goal and make a reward. Uh, don't focus on what I missed out on, but focus on what's ahead of me. 
Um, let's see. So one gal wrote three uh, or eight foods that helped her with weight loss. I don't know that they necessarily um, apply to me. So I wrote them down, but Greek yogurt, dive bars, berries, Bolt House Ranch. I'm not like a big ranch person, so I don't know that I'll buy that. Turkey pepperoni, chicken breast. Um, so they said um, for the GLP-1 diet plan, which is what Manjaro and Ozempic and Wagovi are, um, low fat whole foods diet is best. Um, because if you have too high of fat, it can give you nausea. Um, and then if it's also too high fat, or like I was saying, the hard to process meats, it can give you like some burps or acid reflux. Um, eat in regular intervals to avoid nausea. So, um, um, with this medication, it also is an appetite suppressant. It also cuts down on the food noise. So, you know, ideally you won't be thinking about food so much. We'll see. I'm just going to remain open-minded, but if I have, if my appetite is suppressed and I'm not constantly thinking about food, that will be a win for me. So, um, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hopeful that that's what happens. So, um, eating in regular intervals, some people have said that they actually have to like set timers and remind themselves to eat. Cause if you don't eat, you know, it sounds good. Maybe like, Oh, well I just won't eat and I'll lose all this weight, but your body needs food. Number one, number two, you need to be able to use the restroom. So you have to keep eating to kind of keep things moving. So, um, bowel issues. So stool softeners, there's also supplements. Um, magnesium glycinate. So one of the videos that I watched, she takes magnesium glycinate at night, three fiber wells in the morning, a probiotic in the afternoon, and then an, a laxative as a last resort. Um, there's another supplement option called mag 7 um, taking it before bed with lots of water. Um, you know, again, like all these things, I'm just kind of writing them down to keep in the back of my mind. I don't know what issues I'm going to have. If any, some people don't have any of these issues. So who knows? Um, the me 360 app is one that I've heard good things about as a way to track your before progress. Um, I will be doing some measurements and, um, you know, some starting before pictures um, let's see. I do want to keep a journal. So I guess I am talking about things that I'm planning. Maybe that's easier. Um, so I do plan on splitting the dose. Um, and then I will be giving it in my thigh, um, rather than my stomach. Um, I do want to make a water goal goal. I want to keep a journal of what I'm eating so that again, I can make sure I'm getting enough protein. That's a big thing. Um, and then I also want to track my, any gastric issues that I have. Um, so they said it's really important to avoid anything greasy. So heavy cream, butter, fried foods, um, avoiding sugar. Um, you can keep blood sugar stable by combining carbs, protein, and fiber every time you eat. Um, Milk of magnesia is good to keep on hand in case of, um, um, uh, <laughs> constipation. Um, 20 grams of protein every three to four hours is a good protein goal. Um, drinking water with electrolytes. So I don't really do that now, but I guess that's something that's important. Someone mentioned there's Gatorade packet flavor packets that have 10 grams of protein in there. I don't know if, if that, I, I'm always a little skeptical, like how do they put protein in something that's liquid? But I mean, other than a, a protein shake, I understand, but if it's clear liquid, it's like, how does that have protein in it? But <clears throat> I guess it couldn't hurt. Cycling your injection sites can not only help with nausea, but also can help with any weight loss stalls. Um, magnesium spray for the bottom of the feet. <laughs> Again, just keeping it in the back of my mind. Um, 
have protein at least one hour before injection. So my plan is to um, have either some cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, protein shake. Um, I plan on doing my injection at night so that I can sleep through any nausea or issues. Um, and uh, I will probably do my first shot tonight. Um, I will probably do it more in the evening um, just to make sure I don't have any bad reactions since it's my first time. And then I'm off tomorrow. I mean, I have a couple things to do, but they aren't like urgent. So if I'm really feeling like sick or run down, then, you know, I can take it easy. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do measurements and, um, some before pictures tomorrow or starting pictures. Um, there's a measuring tape where you, you can actually do, it's on a, um, I don't know the word. Basically you can wrap it around. You can measure yourself. You don't have to worry about like someone else measuring for you. I'm going to have Dan help me. Um, so I mentioned by that and I didn't get a chance to, so I'm just going to have Dan help me take measurements and then, um, Yeah, I'll just, I have a scale, so I just want to track things the best I can. Um, papaya en enzymes can help with sulfur burps if that becomes a problem. Vitamin B can help with nausea. I think with the compounding pharmacy, they actually add vitamin B to the mix. Um, and that's what I wrote down, guys. So um, thank you for watching this far. Like I said, I'm excited to start this, <laughs> get in the sunlight. I'm excited to start this and, um, give it a shot. Literally give it a shot. I don't know. All right. Thanks for watching.